going to work. Yeah. Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com. Going to press start streaming. This is going to be a live lesson and I'm so excited about it. Hello, we are now live. This is Jack from tofluency.com. I help English learners reach a high level of English. Now, if you are new to this channel, then click subscribe and also have a look at the description to see some free stuff for you. So I have a book that you can currently download for free. There is a link in the description or you can simply go to, to fluency.com and just download the book on the homepage. So this is a live lesson, which means we have comments and I'm going to show you these comments right now. Um, Someone says I have to change my name to English. You do. That would really help me when it comes to saying hi to everyone. But uh, Nayot is here. Paolo, Franklin, Lulu, um, Strambert. I'm going to read it over here it's more clearly. Gabrielle, Dima, uh, Mohamed, Diego, um, Nergzim. It's great to be on a live lesson. It's great to have you. Sabish, hi, I'm just on time. Rosario from Bolivia. I love Bolivia. Antonio, um, Wojciech, Nazarene, a bunch of people, Haitor are joining live. Thank you for joining. In this English lesson, we are going to do a few things. We're going to look at a phrasal verb that is really popular, but it's quite difficult to explain exactly how to use it. But I'm going to give you an example and do my best to explain it to you. We're also going to talk about, and this is going to be fun, five tips when throwing a party. Okay, th five tips to make a really good party. We'll talk about fundraisers as well and what they mean. And then we'll look at a couple of photos and talk about them. And this is going to give you some vocabulary, give you the practice to practice your writing if you are here live. And just, you know, have a look at some of the photos I've been taken recently. So again, wow, a bunch of people, that means a lot of people, a bunch of people are watching this live. If you are enjoying this live lesson, if you like my live lessons, please give this video a thumbs up and also, also, also share it with your friends. And if you are new, just click that subscribe button. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to share my slides with you. Firstly, this is the picture for this. It's a live English lesson. I call this the Fluency Show. We go live on YouTube, on Facebook, and this is where you can learn lots of great English. Now, did you see this video? Did you see this video? It's called It Drives Me Crazy. It Drives Me Crazy. Let me know if you saw this video. Um, Olga says, it's raining here. It's raining here as well, which is great. Um, did you see this lesson? It drives me crazy. I'm going to share something that I said in this lesson right now. So I made this on a Friday and I said, we don't have big plans for the weekend. We don't have big plans for the weekend. So on Friday, I didn't really have anything planned. We didn't know what we were going to do. We hadn't talked about what we were going to do for the weekend. So you can notice here what we were going to do because it's in the past. When we talk about the future, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this this weekend. We're going to go to the beach, for example. It's not true, but for example. And when you're talking about this in the past, we didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't know what we were going to do. So yeah, we do, we don't, I said, we don't have big plans for the weekend. But I'm gonna use this expression in a second, this phrasal verb. We ended up, we ended up. And I'm going to show you the example first. It's on your screen now. We ended up going to a Christmas show, a fundraiser, 
and a holiday party. We ended up going to a Christmas show, a fundraiser and a holiday party. So you can see in this example, I have used ended up. Now, like I said at the start of the lesson, this can be quite confusing to know how to use this. But this is my explanation. Instead of saying we ended up, you can say we decided to. We decided to do this. We decided to do that. And what we're talking about when we use end up, we're talking about this was what happened in the end, in conclusion. So going back to the example, we didn't have big plans for the weekend, but we ended up doing something. We decided to do this. Or in the end, this is what happened. So we ended up, I'll show you the example again. We ended up going to a Christmas show, a fundraiser, and a holiday party. And I'll just tell you a little bit more about this. This will give you um, some good listening practice. But first, someone asks up here, Sarah, is this a verb um, plus preposition? Yes, exactly, a phrasal verb. And it's when we can use the gerund here, end up doing something, to end up doing something. So we ended up going to a Christmas show in the morning. This was a lot of fun. It was for children, and this was a show of two elves on the stage. So it was like a theater production, but very small. My son really enjoyed it. We met a lot of friends there. It was just a really good morning. Now, in the afternoon, we went to a bar, which you can't see the window in front of me, behind you, but just a few blocks that way, there's a bar, it's a great bar, and it was super busy. It was full of people because on Saturday night, it was the big Christmas celebration weekend. There was a music festival, there was what's called a bar crawl, where people go from bar to bar in fancy dress or costume. And there were office parties, it was packed. Downtown was packed. So it was quite difficult with our two young children, but we still had a really good time. We had wings, we had some beer. My son had some carrots and cucumber. He was very healthy. Um, and we met some friends there. And then, go back to this example, we went to a fundraiser, okay? I'm gonna show you a picture of the fundraiser. And I took this picture. So. During the fundraiser, there was also a band playing. So we had a band playing at this fundraiser. And we're going to talk about this picture very soon, but it was a lot of fun. And I'm going to explain what a fundraiser is next, okay? It's this. An event held to generate financial support for a charity or other enterprise. So a fundraiser is an event held to generate financial support for a charity or other enterprise. So basically what it is, it's like a party or an event where they raise money. So people donate money to a charity or to some kind of organization. So in this case, it was a fundraiser for a children's charity and what happened is you go to the fundraiser and they say minimum donation is $10 per person. So you have to pay at least $10 to go into the fundraiser. But if you want, you can pay more and you can also buy things inside and donate more money in different ways. And this is a lot of fun because it goes to a good cause. The money goes somewhere to a good cause, but everyone still has a really good time. So this is what a fundraiser is, okay? An event held to generate financial support for a charity or other enterprise. So it's to generate money for some kind of charity. Let's check the um, comment section. Welcome if you are watching live. 
Um, Alessandra, yesterday my friend and I went for a pizza, went out for a pizza, but we ended up eating meat in a nice restaurant. Perfect example. In conclusion, we decided to do this in the end. So yeah, you can say things like that. You know, my wife and I went out um, for a few drinks and we ended up staying out until 6 a.m. That's what happened in conclusion. Um, Rosa says, great question, at the bottom down here, can you see this? Does it mean that we finally decided to do something? Okay, yeah, it's like we finally decided to do something. This is what happened, you know, in conclusion, this is what happened at the end. So everybody, thank you if you are watching live. This is so much fun. And again, if you're new here, it's great to have you. It is great to have you. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple more expressions. One with fundraiser and one with party. Because I was thinking about this. And look on your screen now. When we're talking about this event, when we're talking about creating a fundraiser or something like this, we use the phrasal verb put on. Put on an event, put on a fundraiser, put on a show. And I had a lesson about two weeks ago where I talked about putting on a show. So when we're talking about a fundraiser, I can say in this example, a local company put on this fundraiser. A local company put on this fundraiser. And this means that they organized it. They created it. They organized this event. So they put on a fundraiser. So you can put on a fundraiser, put on a show, put on an event. However, with party, it's more common to say throw. To throw a party or simply to have a party. So to throw a party. And in a moment, we're going to look at five tips to help you throw an amazing party. And I've chosen this article because there's some really useful vocabulary in this article. So we're going to look at that in a moment. Um, I'm just gonna go back to the comment section. Um, I was going to study math. Sorry about this. I don't know what's happened here. For whatever reason, it's showing that. I'm not sure why. That's weird. So this one should be showing, bear with me everyone. It just changed screen. That should be better now. Okay, so Quan has a great one up here. I was going to study math, but I ended up watching TV instead. Shame on my procrastination. Yeah, procrastination is when you should be doing something, but you do other things instead. Olga, don't go. I'm leaving now. I have an appointment. Stay, stay. Um, oh, Sebastian. Yeah, you can also have a telethon, telethon, where it's like a TV show, and they encourage you to call up and donate money. A lot of this is done online now or through text. Um, What's the difference between put on, hold, and throw? Yeah, so you can, like we said, throw a party, it's more common, put on a fundraiser. It just depends on, on the type of event we're talking about. Ayub says, I'm very happy seeing you on this live lesson. Thank you for being here. Um, let's go back to, <laughs> we've got someone from Vietnam who saying it's midnight or quarter past 12. I'm so sleepy, okay? Stand up and just do five jumps, five jumps. If you're sleepy, do that and then come back to the lesson. You'll feel great. Okay, let's look at a, a article now. I love this. Look at the picture here. Five, trip, five tips for throwing a really great party. Five tips for throwing a really great party. So we're using here, throw a party. And this party looks a lot of fun, this picture. 
looks like people are uh, having a lot of fun here. Now, from what I remember, I think this is somebody who throws parties in Hollywood. So we're talking about extravagant parties. We're talking about really, you know, fun events. And look at tip number one. And I love this. Cram people into small spaces. Cram people into small spaces. So to cram something into a small space is when there's not really enough space for what you want to put into that space. So <clears throat> in terms of a party, if you are cramming people into a small space, it means you have a very small room with a lot of people. But you're like saying, okay, everyone, go into that room. Go into that room. Cram people into small spaces. And the idea behind this and why it makes the party better is because you have to interact with people. It takes you out of your comfort zone. You are very close to other people. You say, oh, hi, oh, hi, etc." So cramming people into small spaces helps the party. People might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but it helps the party. Now, when my son had his third birthday party, it was raining outside for about an hour. And we have quite a small house. So we crammed people inside. And my wife was worried about this. But I said, all the good parties that I've been to have been crammed, you know, crammed full of people where you can't really move. And there's just something about that. There's something about having lots of people in a small space to get them to open up and to talk to people. So I love that one, cram people into small spaces. Tip number two is something that we did at my son's birthday party too. And this is a fun one. Um, this is talking about alcohol. Offer people a strong drink when they first arrive. Offer people a strong drink when they first arrive. I really like this one too. Now, maybe you don't drink alcohol, but you know this is typical in America, especially the UK. Um, when, again, when my son had his third birthday party, we made some sangria for the parents so the parents could drink. And we made it strong, which means a lot of alcohol. And we offered people this drink when they first arrived. And then everyone just relaxes a little bit. Everyone feels like they want to have a good time. So offer people a strong drink when they first arrive. Let's quickly have a look at the comment section. Nadia says, crowded, yeah. So when you cram people into small spaces, it is crowded, it is crowded. Um, it's like a crowd of people in the same room, exactly, exactly. A crowd of people in the same room. It's really crowded, it's crammed, um, it's packed. You can also say packed. That's a really common way. The bus was packed. The bar we went into last week was packed. It was crammed full of people, okay? The subway at rush hour is packed, okay? Um, oh, we've got a great one from Felix. Um, when parties are cramped, I end up going home. Very good, I love it. And someone says here at the bottom, I can't quite read that name, Stanbert, I really like sangria. Oh, and this is great, from Nergism says, in our country, we offer black tea to our guests. That's great. Okay, let's go to tip number three. And I, there's another great word here. Crank up the volume. Look on your screen. Crank up the volume. Now to crank up the volume, what we're doing here is we're talking about music. And it just means to turn up the volume. So to crank up the volume. This is quite a common phrasal verb, but very specific to, well, mainly music. When we're in the car and a good song comes on, I always say, let's crank this up. Turn up the volume, make the music louder. So the idea here, when you are hosting a party and you crank up the volume, of the music, it makes everyone feel more energetic. 
it creates a, a better atmosphere. Now, sometimes if the party is about conversation, then this isn't always a great thing to do because people can't hear each other. But if you want to make the party more energetic, make it more fun, maybe people are going to dance, crank up the volume, crank up the volume. Um, let's have a look. Spanish sangria, exactly. Zara says we offer juice. Nazim, we also offer black tea. Very good. Okay, so crank up the volume is number three. Number four, I think this is going to be new vocabulary as well. And it's on your screen now. Invite a wild card. Invite a wild card. Now, in this case, a wild card is a person who's a little bit different, a little bit maybe crazy in a good way. Because a lot of the time at parties, it's full of people who are very similar. Let's just say, you know, you're at a party where everyone is vegetarian. You know, everyone does yoga. Everyone only drinks tea all day. But then you invite somebody who is older, who is very loud, who loves meat. And what you do is it just takes everyone out of their comfort zone. So I'm sure you have a friend who is like the life and soul of the party, someone who loves to be at parties and loves to be at the center of everyone's attention. And inviting a wild card, someone who's a little bit different, can just change that atmosphere, can make people get out of their comfort zones. So I really like that one, invite a wild card, invite someone who might be a little bit crazy, who might be, you know, a little bit too loud, a little bit too energetic, but it just changes the dynamic, it changes the atmosphere of the party. So invite a wild card. Tip number five, make them laugh, make them laugh. Now, if you're laughing, you're completely relaxed. If you're laughing, you're in a good mood, okay? And the idea at a party is if you can make people laugh, then everyone's going to relax and be more comfortable. Now, in this article, she recommended creating different atmospheres and, and props. So introducing silly hats introducing, you know, costumes, doing something a little bit different, playing a game, for example. Because again, when you make people laugh, people feel good, they feel happy, they want to enjoy themselves a little bit more, okay? Now, I've just got a, co a question for everyone watching live, um, and I'll come back to the comments in a second. But my question is, completely forgotten my question. That's it. Do you like throwing parties at your house? Do you like throwing parties at your house? Please let me know in the comment section if you are watching live. And I'll just go to the comments. I'll make them a little bit bigger so we can see. Um, okay. Jay Pablo over here. It's like an outgoing person. Yeah. Someone who is outgoing, someone who is open and talks a lot about themselves. So that's a great one. Is it someone different to the other people? Yeah, a wild card is someone who's a little bit different to everybody else, okay? A little bit different to everybody else. Ayub, I like to interact with people and it changed some ideas, but I'm not that kind of person who likes to be in a party where it's so crowded and the music is low. Or maybe you prefer low music. Yeah, sometimes people do feel uncomfortable when there are a lot of people there. When there are a lot of people at the party, it can make you feel uncomfortable. Um, Are you saying, can you crank up your voice? Um, No, you would say speak louder. 
unless you're asking me to speak louder. Um, but yeah, you'd say, can you speak louder, please? Crank up is usually for music, usually for music. Um, so, Susanna, I don't like throwing parties, especially if they get wild. No, because you have to wash the dis dishes. Um, no, because my home will be very dirty after they leave. A lot of people don't want to tidy up after a party. Hi, to Yes, I love to throw parties at my home with friends and lots of beer. Very cool. Sometimes, Malika, crowded parties drive me crazy. Yes! You're using the phrase I used in the other lesson. Fantastic. Drives me crazy. Um, teacher Estella Vera, I like throwing birthday parties for my children. Um, <laughs> I won't read that one. Yes, I'm a musician. I love singing for everyone. Leonardo, I need to invite you to my parties. Let's just move this up a little bit. I like throwing parties and being invited to them. Great phrase, and being invited to them. I like throwing parties and being invited to them. Sarah, no, but I like uh, being invited to a party that you know. Um, yeah, and Sarah says, when you throw a party, you have to do a lot of work. There's so much work you have to do. You have to tidy, you have to prepare, you have to cook, you have to make sure everyone knows it's happening. You have to entertain people during the party, then you have to clean up afterwards. There are a lot of things you have to do during a party or to throw a party. Whew, thank you everyone for your comments. Are you enjoying this lesson so far? Please let me know and click up, click click the thumbs up button if you are enjoying it and always if you're new subscribe let's go back to this photo we'll move on from parties take a look at this photo i'm really proud of this photo i think it's it's a good one it's a good one for taken from my new camera and as you know like i mentioned i am getting into photography it's a phrase i've taught recently to get into something means it's starting to become a hobby. I'm getting more and more interested in photography, okay? So this is a photo I took. Now, a couple of things, and what I'm gonna do here, if I can find it, is these are two questions you can ask about this photo. Firstly, what's he playing? What's he playing? So when you're talking about photos, okay, musicians, you can ask what's he playing? So I want you to answer these two questions. What's he playing? What's he wearing? What's he playing? What's he wearing? Okay, and let's just repeat this sentence, say this out loud. What's he playing? What's he playing? What's he wearing? What's he wearing? Very good. So let's see if people know what he is playing. Um, it's not Cat Stevens. <laughs> it's not Cat Stevens. Someone says contrabass. Maybe that's true. I'm not very good in this musical instrument, but from what I know, um, I think it's a double bass. People are saying contrabass. Interesting. So I'm probably learning new vocabulary with you all. But yeah, it's like a, it's a bass, stand-up bass. I think it's called a double bass, um, most people use. But as you can see, people are saying contra bass as well. Um, like Amelia says. And then, fantastic, Susanna, he's wearing a hat, a scarf, and a shirt. Exactly, he's wearing a hat, a scarf, and a shirt. So, that is what he is playing and what he is wearing. Thank you everyone for commenting on this. I'm just gonna go back to the photo. One second. So yeah, you can see here he's playing a bass. There's a microphone there. You can see lights in the background. He's wearing, no one said this, but he's wearing glasses as well. He is wearing glasses. He's wearing a striped shirt. Someone said he's wearing a ring. He's also wearing a striped 
scarf. Um, yeah, and someone said he's wearing casual clothes. Exactly. Relaxed clothes. So, just to let you know, this was, um, again, this was taken at the fundraiser. This was taken at the fundraiser. Okay, I've got another picture to show you. And this is pretty exciting. Can you see this on your screen now? Can you see this on your screen? Now, we're going to do a little bit of a challenge here. And I'm going to describe where my office is. And I want you to point to it on the screen. And then I'll show you where it is. So this is a little bit of a challenge. So you can see on the left a purple building, a red building, and then white brick. So the white brick building is my office building. Now you can see there's a lower level where the windows and the wall are in a little bit. And then above that you can see a window on your left a window on your right, and then windows in the middle. So let me explain that again. On the left, you can see a purple brick building. Next to that, a red building. Next to that is a white or cream building, cream bricks. That is my office building. Now, the lower part, it goes in a little bit. It goes in a little bit, but above that, there, are, there is a window on the left, a window on the right, and then the middle window, that is where my office is. That is where I am right now. So, hopefully you guys are pointing to this. I'm gonna try and do this live by adding an arrow on here. And it, it, it is, it's, this is not working. I was hoping this was gonna work. Um. Let's see <laughs> if I can actually point to it on this screen. One second, everybody. Maybe if I put some text. Ah, the arrows are behind. Now you can see the arrows. Okay, good. It is here. So you can see me right in here on this screen now. And I'll just put that in a different color. So you can actually see it. I'll put it in red. And that is where my office building is. So you can see I've just written here on your screen now. Did you get that right? Did you get that right? And Mohammed, you've changed your name, which is great. Alessandra says, are you on the first floor? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually on the second floor because if I go back to that picture, this is really good practice. You can see there's the lower level. Above that, there's another window, and then above that, there's another window as well. Um, so that's where my office is. Now, people are asking, can I see your car? Where is your car? And a few people got this right. Okay, so the car, my car is not there. I don't park it on the street. I park it in a parking lot behind there, okay? So you can't actually see my car, but think what you can see if you look on this picture again this is really small but you can see the building at the back okay the beautiful building on the right of the picture below that is another building at the end of the street and that's where the bar is we went to that bar on um saturday night my friend's bar and that's where that is Okay, cool. So let's just talk a little bit now about some of the vocabulary from this. And I want to just to tell you about this. Um, firstly, as people said, you can see cars parked on the street. So when you're talking about parking, we use the preposition on. You can see cars are parked on the street. Okay. And you can also talk about this, you know, is there on street parking? Where are you parked? On the street. So when we're talking about to park somewhere, we park on the street, on the street. Now, something else you can see in this picture 
is power cables. Can you see the power cables going across the picture to the buildings? So you can see the power cables there. So that's something else we can see in the picture, power cables. Now what's interesting, in the UK and a lot of Europe, they bury the power cables. In the US, they're all on those poles and they're overhead. They, oh, they are overhead in the street. It's just a, it doesn't look very good. Um, and some places do bury the power cables, but mostly they are on the street. And when it's windy, when there's a storm, these fall over and break and it takes a long time to fix. Now, one more thing you can see on that picture is a zebra crossing or a crosswalk. Okay, a zebra crossing or a crosswalk. So look back to this picture. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner of the picture, a zebra crossing or a crosswalk. So let's go back to the comment section. Um, someone's asking where my drink is today. It's right here. I am having water today. After this lesson, I'm going to get a coffee. Um, but right now I'm drinking water. Someone asked, there's a tower at the end of the road. Is it a church? No, this is an old building. And um, now it's used for offices. Let's have a look. Someone says, a lots of power cables. Exactly. Someone says, it's dangerous. A lot of cables. Cables aren't nice. It looks quite strange, says Susanna. I agree with you. I mean, this is something... <coughs> Excuse me. This is something that I have got used to. In the past, I saw these power cables and thought it looks uh, <laughs> it looks quite strange. Mohammed is at the door. Nope. You're lying, Mohammed. You are lying. Unless you are downstairs, but there's no one outside right now. Um, Dima, sometimes it's quite difficult to park cars in such places that you have shown. Yeah, it's sometimes it is quite difficult to find a parking space, to find a parking space on the street. But the parking lot that I have, all, there's always a space there. It's a fantastic one. It's hidden. Okay, this parking lot is hidden. People don't use it, which is great because I always have a spot there. I always have a spot there. Falesco says pedestrian lane. Um, we say sidewalk in America or pavement in the UK. And that's where pedestrians walk down. Here's a road. Let's move this over. Here's a road. Here's the sidewalk, the pavement. And that's where pedestrians walk down. How do you say crosswalk in, crosswalk in the UK? A zebra crossing. A zebra crossing because it's black and white like a zebra. Betul, is there downtown? Yeah, so this picture, go back to this picture. You can see the building at the end. Um, that is on the main square of downtown. And this road here is not a busy road, but in front of this, in the front of the building, it's one of the busiest streets in Asheville. It's one of the busiest streets. So, yeah. It's this is downtown. I, I work in downtown Asheville. Um, Dagmar, I like white wine, please, or black beer. Very cool. <laughs> um, what time is it there? It is 20 to 1. And that actually reminds me, we have done this lesson for 40 minutes now. It's now 12.40. So, guys, if you have enjoyed it, again, Please give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Share it with your friends. And be sure to go to my channel and check out my recent lessons, okay? I'll post a couple over here and watch those, check them out. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for being here, everybody. It's been such good fun teaching this lesson. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye.